This is Elon Musk. Hello? You know him, or let's say you've at least already heard his name a few times by now. Recently, he made the headlines during the Musk Twitter saga. We talk about Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> and he even joked about buying Manchester United. And he also sends stuff to space. But most of us discovered this busy man with his electric vehicle company, Tesla. The company that made EVs cool to the public eye. And even more than cool, sexy. So yes, that's him and his company. Hello? But he didn't invent electric cars. It could be attributed to this Dutch professor, Sibrandus Strating of Koningen, who designed this electric vehicle in 1835. And at the end of the 19th century in London, you were able to ride an electric taxi with a lovely nickname, the Hummingbirds. Now that we know that electric vehicles were around a long time ago, and that after disappearing from the scene, they're now making a comeback, it's important to understand how they work, where they beat fossil fuel vehicles, and where they still lag behind. To understand how an electric vehicle works, you have to understand how its motor works. To have a point of comparison, we'll start by looking at how an internal combustion engine works. Et le rôle du moteur à combustion interne, c'est de transformer l'énergie qui est libérée par la combustion du carburant en une énergie mécanique. And that is done following the principle that fuel plus air, when compressed and ignited, causes a little explosion. By using the energy released by the explosion to move a piston in a linear motion, and by mechanically transforming this linear motion to a rotary one, we can make the wheels turn and our vehicle move. On the other side, the electric motor is using electricity and magnetism to work. Or to be more precise, electromagnetism. We've all seen at some point that opposite poles of a magnet attract, and the like poles repel. Car manufacturers have used this principle to build their motors. La technologie la plus répandue, c'est ce que l'on appelle des, des moteurs synchrones. Et donc il va fonctionner avec une partie fixe, que l'on appelle le, le stator, et une partie mobile qui va tourner autour du stator qu'on appelle le rotor. Et donc le moteur va être contrôlé en fait par le courant qui traverse euh, le stator qui va créer un champ magnétique sur le rotor and make the rotor rotate. But for this to work, the motor must be supplied with electricity. And this electricity comes from another extremely important element, the battery. La technologie de batterie la plus répandue, c'est celle des batteries lithium-ion, parce que c'est une technologie qui permet une grande densité énergétique, donc qui va pouvoir permettre d'embarquer un maximum d'énergie dans un volume ou un nombre de kilos relativement limité. A small problem here is that the battery delivers direct current, and the motor needs alternating current to operate. Et donc on a besoin de convertir cette énergie électrique d'un courant continu vers un courant alternatif. And that's the job of our last major part, the inverter, to transform the direct current from the battery into the alternating current to power the motor. But not all electric vehicles are purely electric. There are also hybrid vehicles that combine an electric motor and an internal combustion engine. One takes over from the other, depending on the type of use of the vehicle. Le moteur euh, électrique va permettre de parcourir quelques dizaines de kilomètres et ensuite ça va être le moteur à combustion interne qui va prendre le relais pour pouvoir effectuer des distances plus longues. And the last type of electric vehicle is those that run on hydrogen. And this time, there is no battery. Ce sont des véhicules en fait qui utilisent l'hydrogène pour produire de l'électricité à bord du véhicule et qui émettent euh, de la vapeur d'eau euh, à l'échappement. Now that we understand how EVs are working, we can look at all the benefits they offer when compared to internal combustion engine vehicles. The first, and surely the most important, or at least the most promoted, is the absence of pollution. No exhaust system equals no emission, and no emission equals no pollution. The second concerns the noise, or rather, the silence, of electric cars. Les véhicules électriques procurent également un confort au niveau de la conduite parce qu'on n'a pas de vibration, beaucoup moins de vibration. On a un silence bah, qui permet également au conducteur d'être beaucoup moins fatigué. Un autre avantage qui peut être noté, ça va être également le, la réduction des occurrences de panne hein, parce qu'on est sur des technologies qui sont beaucoup moins complexes. Euh, le moteur est moins complexe, donc le risque de panne est également moins important par rapport à un moteur thermique qui a beaucoup plus de petites pièces en mouvement. But not everything is rosy in the garden of EVs. There are also some downsides to this type of vehicle. 
due to their novelty and low production, they remain expensive vehicles. The driving range covered on a full charge is still limited, even if progress has been made in recent years. Finding a place to recharge can also be a real pain, especially outside cities. And even if you do find this charging station, you'd better not be in a hurry. If it takes a few minutes to fill your tank with petrol, it can take a few hours to recharge your battery. The last big drawback is once more linked to the battery, and this time to the minerals that it's made of. Lithium and cobalt are needed to build a battery, and these minerals are known to have a huge environmental impact. EVs aren't perfect, and probably never will be, but at the moment they're the best individual vehicle option that we have. If they can't be the only solution offered to mobility problems in today's world, at least they're here, and they're getting better every day.